Welcome to my quick start guide. Tip number one, if this is your first save ever, shut off this video immediately and go figure out the start of the game yourself. You'll learn a lot and probably have a lot of fun muddling through and figuring out the systems of Satisfactory yourself. It'll benefit you in the long run. But if you're looking for a little help getting started, today's video will show you everything you need to get off to a quick and organized start in Satisfactory. We'll go over my favorite path through your first four milestones, some factory layouts at each stage, how to set up your biomass power infrastructure, and some pro tips and tricks on designing clean, organized factories. I've made my new start here in the Rocky Desert, the best place for beginners in my opinion. I'm playing with passive creatures largely so I don't get harassed while I'm making the video. I've also skipped onboarding or tier zero, so we have a few things unlocked already and have to make a decision on what tier one or two milestones to go after first. Let's go to the hub and check it out. I use the milestones here as a guide on choosing what to automate when and at what scale. It's important to note that you don't have to do the milestone unlocks in sequential order. All tier one and tier two milestones are available to you right away. While we'll jump out of order here in a little bit, we'll start with a first milestone in tier one, base building. The reason why that is a no brainer first milestone pick is that it unlocks foundation. If I could give beginners one tip, it would be to tell them to build on foundations as early as possible. If you care about having clean looking factories, which you don't necessarily have to do by the way, getting onto foundations as soon as you can is the only way to go. The requirements for unlocking the base building milestone are 200 concrete, 100 iron plates, and 100 iron rods. It may be tempting to just bash out some of this stuff by handcrafting it at the bench, but don't give in. This is an automation game and we're gonna automate everything from the beginning. We might knock some stuff out by hand while we're waiting for the machines just to keep things moving, however. We'll need at least two different production chains, one from limestone and another from iron ore. We'll start with limestone since concrete production is a little slower than iron production. We're going to build these in a temporary manner because we'll rebuild this on foundations once we complete this milestone. Go here to the hub and we're going to choose base building and that milestone will unlock all the different foundations and walls and a lookout tower. But our first hot tip is there's actually a ladder on the side of your hub and you can go up on the top of this little platform and survey your kingdom. And so we're here on the west coast of the rocky desert. There's some copper nodes over there, some iron nodes over there, and some limestone nodes in the distance. You can see I've pinged one right there. It's 250 meters away. So let's go check it out and get our production started. So my next tip is that you can hold shift to run, but you can move even faster than that. If while you're running and you hit crouch, you slide and then hit spacebar, and you can jump pretty far. So this is much faster than walking or running around. And when you get the blade runners, you can move very quickly. So here we are in our limestone node. It's 250 meters away from our hub. So not too bad. So we'll first get a portable miner out. We'll put that down while we chip away at the rest of this node. And then we'll do this one by hand. Portable miners whirring away there. So I'm gonna grab this limestone out of here and we'll be back in a little bit to collect some more limestone. And another hot tip is whenever you're running around, just grab whatever plants that you see. Eventually you will use that for sure while we're trying to pump out as much biomass production as we can to keep our machines powered. Comply. Now we have portable miners set up on every node, so that will at least give us enough materials to make sure we have the materials to make a couple biomass burners and a couple miners. Ooh, that's an interesting walking style. If you are annoyed by alien artifacts like I am, you need to find a way to get over there and grab it. And the easiest way to do it is just build ramps up to it and then grab it. I'm actually gonna come over here and jump up here as high as I can because we really don't have very many materials start of the game so if you can get as close as you can like that and then just build some found oh we don't have any foundations yet oh no Ooh. And if you turn it into a platformer you can jump across and then grab your artifact and now it will shut up thank you we have a limited amount of materials to be able to make power poles and cables so we need to be a little bit judicious on where we put them. So I'm gonna put one down right here and this will kind of be the central power hub for our early factory. So we're gonna hook this up 
there. We're gonna hook this up there as well. Now there's only four output. You need to be careful to leave yourself room for one additional connection normally on all of these. Uh, so I would recommend at the start, just put down a new pole instead of putting down a fourth connection because you'll almost invariably always have to plug another wire in there. So we'll use our power line like this. And another tip is that if you get a power line, it will put a pole on the end of it like that. So we're gonna take this down towards our limestone production, our concrete production, and bring this as far as humanly possible because we're trying to save on power poles. We're gonna stretch this out all the way down to our node. Now that we have our power poles down here, we don't have any biomass burners going yet. We're gonna mark one miner, place it down on the node, then hook up our power pole. Then we're gonna make a constructor for turning limestone into concrete, we're gonna put it right next door. We'll get a power off of here, hooked onto it as well. We'll put our recipe on our constructor, concrete. This will use four megawatts of power. This Mark One miner uses five megawatts of power, so we have to make sure that we leave nine megawatts of power going at all times or our production will stop. But for now, let's get some biomass into our biomass burners on our hub to get our production started. And one thing that they have added in update seven is you can just hold down E as you walk around and it will grab all the biomass in front of you. You used to have to spam the button and get your clicking finger tired. But now you can just hold down E and grab everything that you look at. It. And the next tip that you have is do not put leaves and sticks directly into your biomass burners. Always change them into biomass and eventually solid biomass. We don't have any power yet, so we can't use a machine to do it. So we're gonna turn this into biomass at the crafting bench. And so you can just hit space bar and it will stay down and make everything. You don't have to click a million times. I remember back in the old days, I used to have a book next to my computer that I could lean on my space bar to make sure I didn't have to just stand there and keep clicking to make things by hand. So let's put our biomass into our biomass burners. That each one of these makes 20 megawatts of power. The separate biomass burners that you put next to it actually make 30 megawatts of power. So just be aware that there is a difference in power between the standalone biomass burners and biomass burners in the hub. It only burns biomass up to the power that you need. Like we said, we have a miner going and then we have a constructor going, which is nine megawatts. Right now the miner is only going, but you're gonna see that constructor start up and the power consumption go to nine megawatts as well. And so because we have biomass in both of them, it's burning a little bit slower in each machine. So the more biomass burners that you have, the slower that each machine's biomass burn. So we need an additional Mark I miner as well. So I'm actually gonna make an equipment workshop. And then to make a portable miner, you just need a couple of rods and plates. So we're gonna make two of those, one for our copper miner and one for our iron miner. There's another tip too, is you can have a, uh, automated miner and a portable miner on the same node and it still continues to grab iron in the portable miner this production chain has an extra step unlike concrete where you can take your limestone and put it directly into a into a constructor first we need to smelt our iron ore into iron ingots so let's get out a smelter and we'll put this right next door set up a little temporary setup before we can get foundations unlocked here shortly so i'll have a smelter here and the ore flows from your miner into your smelter. Then we're gonna put a constructor right next door like this. See the output comes out the back of the smelter. So we'll put this constructor turned around this direction like this right next door. And we'll take the output from here and put it right into this smelter like this. So now we need to put the recipes on the machines. This is going to be iron ingots. Then this will be iron plate. Eventually we'll get iron rod production going as well. So a smelter uses four megawatts of power. So this is four megawatts plus four megawatts plus five megawatts, 13 megawatts of power. So that's nine from our limestone production and 13 from our iron production. We come over here, that's 22. And then we also have a copper miner hooked up already. So that's 27. So we need to be very cognizant of not going over and we're gonna be required to build some more biomass burners here very quickly. So always keep an eye on this so you don't blow your fuse. Let's go get our copper production fired up over here. We have a miner on the node already. We need a very similar setup. You need to smelt the ore into ingots first. We'll put that over here. We'll put a smelter down. 
First, here's another tip. You have a hot bar down at the bottom. You actually have multiple hot bars. So if you hold down Alt and then use your scroll wheel, you have 10 hot bars down there that you can scroll through. And then to put additional things on your hot bar, you just go over them in the menu and then just hit the number. So if I want constructors to be in the 10th spot, you can just hit zero and put it right there. If I want smelters to be in the ninth spot, I can put it right there, miners in the eighth spot. So now I have those where I can just hit zero and then get out a constructor like this. Now we wanna line up the input with this one with the output, so we'll turn it around like this. And if you hit control, it will actually line up the two machines in the middle like this. You can get started a little bit before you have foundations if you wanna line it up. Although we're just setting this up uh, pretty temporarily here. So we'll take our output from our smelter, put it in the input of our constructor, and then put on your recipe. We'll make wire here. There's two products to make uh, from the copper chain, but first you need to make wire before you make cable. Oh, don't forget to hook up your belt from your miner to your production chain. So now we can hook this up to the power. So now we've automated all of our production chain. We've automated copper, we've automated iron, and we've automated limestone. So now all we really need to do is make sure these things stay running by maintaining our power and then grabbing the output and then finishing the milestone. All right, so let's go check on our limestone production. That was the first one we got started. Let's see how it's doing. So we'll run over here and check. We have now have 207 concrete. So let's go grab that. That's actually enough to get our milestone. So let's take that over there, cash that in right away. Okay, first thing in. Let's grab some of this iron ore and we'll make some iron rods by hand. We don't quite have enough power yet to get a second iron chain going, but we'll do that here in a little bit. But for now, let's make some iron rods while we're waiting. So to do that first, we need to make iron ingots so we can hold down space bar. Good opportunity to stand up from your chair, something that you might not do. When I first got Satisfactory, I played for like six hours straight and I stood up and I was a little stiff. So every once in a while, Hot tip, do a little stretch, stand up, get a drink, say hello to your family. They'll appreciate it. Okay, I think that's more than enough. Now we'll do the same thing for iron rods. If you need to do anything by hand, iron rods is the best because you get one iron rod per click on the button. So they actually make them fairly quickly as handcrafting goes in this game. And while you're over here, make some more biomass. Make sure we can keep our biomass burners topped up so we don't blow a fuse. So you can see our maximum consumption is 35 megawatts and our capacity is 40. So this is really all you can really do at this point if you automate limestone, iron, and copper production at the start. So you just keep it to these machines. You can do it just off the biomass burners of the hub. And since we handcrafted all those iron rods, now we have plenty. So we'll drop off a load here in the machine. Now we're only waiting for 100 iron plates which I think we probably have if we go over here. Oh yes, we have 182 iron plate. This is the benefit of automating everything. Even when you do have to hand craft things, everything else is working for you in the background. So then when you're done, you can just go pick them up and do what you need to do. Let's put our iron plates in here and we get to do my favorite part of the game, especially the early game, which is hitting this beautiful big red button. I love the sound effects. There's nothing more than I like than hitting this button. I'm far enough in the game on my main save where I don't get to do this very often. So I'm very excited. One, two, three. Milestone reach. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, now that that's away, we can select a new milestone. And so I said it was a no brainer picking base building as the first one because it unlocks foundation. And the next choice is a no brainer as well. It's logistics so we can get splitters and mergers and that really helps us expand our production out a little bit. As you can see at the bottom, we almost have the materials for this milestone already. We almost have enough iron rods and iron plates and we just need wire. Now we can get our foundations down, line up everything in the world grid and get our factory off to the organized, beautiful start that it deserves. So we'll add foundations to our hot bar because we'll be putting down, eventually putting down a lot of these things. And number one tip when you start laying foundations that I can give you is this. Always start with a two meter or four meter foundation. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start with a two meter and put that as number five 
on my hotbar. And why we want to do that is that when you put things in the world grid, it centers them on the middle of the foundation. If you start it with a two meter, it will line up everything in the world perfectly. If you start a building with a hat with a one meter foundation, it actually centers it in the Z axis on the half meter, divide the foundation in half. And everything that you build off of it will be off just a little bit from everything else that you started on a two meter foundation. Let's start organizing our factory on foundations with our concrete factory here. So I'm gonna get out our two meter foundation and line it up with the highest point around. If you don't do that, then the ground will clip through everything. So we're gonna line it up with the highest point around right here. Then hitting control will line up your foundation with the world grid. So eventually as you expand your factory out around the world, everything will be lined up on the same grid and you will thank me later. So I'll put that first one down while hitting control and then we're lined up. Okay, then everything you go off from there will be lined up on the world grid as well. So now we can introduce an excellent step, which is zooping. So if you, it says build mode default there, that puts down one at a time. So if you hit R, it will say zoop, and then it will, then you can click, put something down, and then you have a second action to extend it out like that in one direction with one click. And we'll add another row here on the end, and now we have a four by four square. So for an early game, this will probably be enough. Let's take a look at why this will be enough room for our factory here in the early game. So mark one miner on a normal node. You can look at the purity of the nodes before you put down the miner by just looking at it like this and it will say either impure, normal, or pure. So a normal node, a mark one miner on a normal node will put out 60 per minute, just like this. The limit of your mark one belt is also 60 per minute. So you're not gonna get any more than that out in the early game. They have 60 limestone coming out. Each constructor making concrete uses 45 limestone. That means we really can only utilize two constructors worth. So we tore down this constructor here for our, for our concrete production. Now we're gonna put it on our foundation. So we're gonna get out our constructor here. As we go to put this constructor down on foundations, I just wanna show you something. When we're on bare ground, the constructor turns with these small steps. But when you go on a foundation, it turns with 90 degrees to help you line everything up, makes it a little bit easier to line up. So a constructor is one foundation wide. We'll line it up with those edges. You can use foundations as alignment guides as well. We're gonna line it up with the edge like so. Then we're gonna grab our belt from here. And you can see once we get it on the foundation, there's this green line right here. And that means you're in line with an input. So we're gonna put it here, lined up with this green line then bring it into the machine. And you can see this is nice and straight. You know, in, in the future, we can get walls that have holes for conveyors and all kinds of stuff, but this is the best that you can do for now. And now we're prepared, we're prepared for a second constructor when we can put a splitter right here on our belt and have a second constructor over here. Then we're gonna get out a storage container. And so they said this machine only holds 500 concrete and we wanna be able to have more than that eventually and not have to run back and forth to grab it every time that we need it. So we're gonna get out a storage container. We're gonna put it right in the middle of the foundation, lined up with that edge right there. And now I can show you the key belt trick for an organized factory. So we'll get out our belt here. And if we want our belt to go along the middle of this foundation, you take it right up to there and you go back two notches like that and then run that belt right along the middle of our foundation and then do the same thing. Bring it up to there where you see the green line where you're at that input, you're gonna go back two notches, and then hook that belt in. Now, if you'll see, those are now two right angles and it just makes it a lot more organized. If you do that trick every time, go to where you want your belt to run, go back two notches, and then you can turn it from there, it will make a right angle every single time. And knowing that trick, from the beginning will really help you keep an organized factory. Let's go grab some stuff and see if we can get some splitters and mergers going. So we have plenty of iron plates, it's actually full. So let's grab that so it can start the construction again. So now we have everything for this milestone as well. So let's put our plates in, put our wire in, and we'll put our iron rods in. We still have enough from when we made them by hand. Again, iron rods are the fastest hand crafting item. So if you have to hand craft something, make it iron rods. We're running a little bit low on cable as well. So I'll hand make it a little bit of that. That's something that we need to start make automating after we get splitters and mergers, which we'll get here momentarily. Okay, so now we have enough iron rods. We'll drop our iron rods in there and then we get to do this again. This, this is my favorite part of the early game that we get to do this so often. So we're gonna launch it three, two, one. 
And this is a milestone that trips people up, or at least they hear what the what Ada just said and said, consider more verticality. And that's really early in the game to try to consider verticality. Right now we only have really have two options. We have foundation, we have ramps. We do have some conveyor lifts now, but it's pretty difficult to get that going at this point in the game. Let's select our next milestone before we go and do anything else. And as I said, we don't have to go in sequential order. The next one here is field research, which gives us access to the MAM, which is good to help us unlock future things in the game. But I really don't think that's the most important thing at this point. The most important thing to me is getting our power set up so we don't always have to be worried about our power, stressing about biomass and all that kind of stuff. And the best way to do that is create solid biofuel and then also have the chainsaw, which will help us hack down bigger trees and will give us a lot of wood and grass that we can turn into solid biofuel much more quickly. So we're gonna select solid biofuel in tier two as our third milestone. So we're gonna do that now. Instead of slapping down and biomass burners and kind of hooking up haphazardly like uh, I have in every other save that we got in this one, we're gonna make almost like a little power plant over here for biomass. So I'm gonna get out my foundation. From now on, basically I'm gonna build every single thing on foundations. Nothing will not go on a foundation. So I'm gonna take a foundation, kind of go to the highest point around so I won't clip through the ground and then hit control. And then that lines up everything to the world grid. You'll notice our hub is not lined up to the world grid because I just put it down. So we're gonna just make this for now, be four foundations wide. Until now, I've gone to the craft bench to make my biomass, always hand making, but we're gonna automate that process as well. And then we can just drop the materials we gathered in the machines and out we'll spit biomass. After we get done with the obstacle clearing milestone, we'll be able to turn that into solid biofuel, which really lasts quite some time. We need to get going with two constructors, but for now we can only do one because we're low on reinforced iron plates, which is something that requires an assembler actually to make. Uh, which we don't have so we're forced to do those by hand for now to get more constructors but why we're doing this i just want to show you is there are recipes for biomass down here for leaves and wood so we're going to go ahead and put the recipe for wood on here knowing that we're going to have a second constructor for leaves over on this side so to make reinforced iron plates we need for an additional constructor and to meet our obstacle clearing milestone, we need screws and screws come from iron rods and we don't even have a machine making iron rods yet, let alone screws. So to add on to this, to add on to our network, we need more power because right now we can only go up to 40 and our maximum consumption is 35. We don't wanna run out of power and trip that breaker. So the number one thing we need to do right now is get an additional source of power and that is an additional biomass burner you need wire rods and iron plates to do that and these are all one square so a biomass burner is one square wide so we're going to put this down on a foundation just like this and eventually we'll have quite a few of these going uh, in our little power plant here but for now we're just going to have one we're going to briefly turn off the power and just make ourselves a little bit more room on our power pole here hook these up over here and then hook this back up into the grid. Then this will be the line from our power grid to all of our machines right here that we can take down if we need to. And then we're also gonna put another pole down right here. And then this will be going to all of our biomass burners that we'll eventually be getting. Then you can go up to any power pole like this and press E and then you can see the power and you can see that we've, we've busted the fuse. That's because I disconnected the power. So we need to turn it back on. We'll pull it down like so, bang. And then everything is going again. So to be able to power this biomass power, now we need to go off here and grab some more biomass. So we're gonna go on a little bit of mission and then we'll come back here in a little bit after we've run around and grab some more biomass. Okay, we've gathered some more biomass and we're gonna top up our machines. We're always gonna make sure that we have enough we're gonna to top up as many machines as possible because that will make them burn down more slowly. The more you're spreading it across multiple burners, the slower it will burn down. So this is our new burner that we hooked up over here. This one will actually add 30 megawatts to our grid. You can see now our capacity has gone from 40 to 70, leaving us a little bit more room to start automating some other chains. 
You can't automate everything from the get-go. Like I said, we need reinforced iron plates for constructors and we need assemblers for that and you need to handcraft that. So we're actually gonna handcraft some screws here. Hold down your space bar to do it to make sure that we have enough to make some reinforced iron plates. You can see in the craft bench, it will tell you how many that you can make over here. Every constructor needs two reinforced iron plates. So I'm just gonna go until we can make 10. One thing I like to do here in the early game as well is I do like to keep my machines running. And so one way you can do that is by looking at the lights on the machine. If they're yellow like this, that means they've stopped or they're below optimum. And you can see both of these are yellow and that is because these constructors are full. So I'm gonna go around and collect my iron plates and collect my wire over here. So this location here actually has three normal iron nodes and I'm gonna leave this iron node over here for iron plate production. And then right here, we're gonna use this one for iron rod production and then eventually screw production. So let's get this top part nicked off here so we can get going over here. All right, so here's another little trick that might not be very useful to you now or even almost wasteful to you now you can actually put foundations over a node and put your miner on top of that and we'll still grab your materials. And this helps keep things looking a little bit organized, especially if you want to keep your miners in a building. So we'll go uh, over our node, hit control, put down a foundation and we'll just jump up here so we can see it. Then we can cover this up. We'll zoop one over here. Remember you can R to switch between default zoop or vertical vertical builds up is zooping that direction if you need it and we're just going to cover up this node you can't see the node but you do know it's there you can always check by paying it so 15 meters away and so we'll get out our miner and we'll put that right on top of it and you can see it is blue it's on the node so we'll face it this way like this so we'll keep everything going here on the same plane so we'll get out more foundations and do a little zooping this direction we're going to try to fully utilize this iron node we haven't really even talked about that or thought about that yet uh, we've just been worried about getting everything going but in this case we're going to start to try to think about our utilization and our efficiency so this is a normal node it outputs 60 iron per minute and so we need to have enough smelters to be able to process that much iron. So let's get out our smelters and we'll start a little row of smelting here. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up at this in the middle of the foundations. You can put them right next to each other, but you know, space, there's a lot of space out here in the world. If you hit control, or in this case, it just does it itself, it will line up with the smelter next to it. Each smelter does 30 per minute and we have 60 per minute coming out. So we need two smelters worth of ingot making. So then this gives us our first opportunity to exercise our new splitters and mergers. So in this case, we have one stream of iron coming out of our miner and we need two streams of iron going into our smelters. So let's add in these very important things to our hot bar. We're gonna make mergers six and splitters Seven. So we're gonna get to exercise our splitters and our mergers for the first time here. So we have one line of iron coming in and two machines. So we need to use a splitter to get that conveyor belt split into these two machines. So we're gonna go ahead and get a belt coming out of this miner and we're gonna to try to get it to line up right here in the middle of this foundation. And so I want it to be as straight as possible coming up here and that is pretty good right there. And we're gonna get out a, our splitter, which we're gonna line it up with this first smelter right here. And you can see the green line coming out and that is lined up. So let's hook up our belt into the splitter and then our splitter over here into the machine. All right, there's one. Now we can get our belt hooked up into the second one to get here. And then when that goes, that's lined up with straight with both the splitter and the machine. If you go back two spots, like that and then put it into the machine from that point then you'll have a nice 90 degree angle so we'll see that nice bend like that and keep this nice and organized and so we're going to put a power pole down here right in the middle as well hook that up to the machines and then hook that up to the power right here we're also going to hook that power up to the miner then everything will start coming out now you see the miner have its cool mining animation then everything will start coming out here to our smelters which are set up to put out 30 iron ingots per minute each adding up to 60 
iron ingots. So we'll gather up this output from the two machines here as well and put it back into one line to move it forward to actually do our production. So we'll get out a merger here. A merger has, you can put in three sources and output in a certain direction. So we'll have our output going out that direction and we'll put it right in the middle of this foundation. We see the green line, nice and lined up. Get that up and then hook it up into the belt. And we'll do the same thing here. Get out the belt here, follow the green line so it's straight, it's lined up, go back to. Curve it in, and then you have a nice 90 degree angle like so, and you can see our iron ingots are already coming out. And you can see the splitter in action over here with the ore splitting off into each machine. Okay, and here's the tricky part where we start to try to figure out how many machines do we need, what do we do to what. So let's just put a constructor down. This isn't lined up, this is just for, for looking. Two things we need to automate are iron rods, which we've been making by hand until now, and screws. And so screws actually takes iron rods as an input to output screws. So you need to make iron rods first. Let's check out the iron rod recipe. The iron rod recipe takes 15 iron ingots in and outputs 15 iron rods per minute. It'll fully utilize this node. We actually need to make four constructors for our iron rods because we're outputting 60 iron ingots per minute. So to use all of those, we need four constructors. And to make four constructors, that means we need at least eight reinforced iron plates. Oh, we do, luckily. Before we do that, check on your power. Constantly always check on your power and see how things are going. We added some new machines to see how much room we have. Okay, so for right now, we're using 48 megawatts and we still have capacity for 70 megawatts. Just talked about making four new constructors. I know constructors, four megawatts per, so that's 16 more which gives us 64 megawatts worth of construction still below our 70 megawatt capacity. That means we need to keep all three of our biomass burners burning at full bore. Let's get some more foundations down here and make room for our four iron rod constructors. As you can see, I am spreading all this out. That's okay. There's plenty of room and satisfactory. We don't need to be super compact all the time. There are places where you don't have a lot of room to build. This is not one of them. We have a lot of room to build here. We're gonna build our four constructors that we need for iron rods right here on these four uh, foundations. So we're gonna put our first constructor down right here with the, make sure you have the input going on the right way. And we're gonna put them right next to each other and you can actually just hit control and it will line them up. Okay, so now we're really gonna make our first manifold. The other ones are just split off. You have 60, they each take 30, you split them in half, then each one gets 30. But now we have four machines. So you can either screw around trying to do a load balancer so you perfectly feed in 15 per machine, which is fine if you wanna take that on as a personal challenge. But I recommend using manifolds. I have a lot of other videos about how to make more complex manifolds, but this is really the basics. If you can do this one, you can do it for the rest of the game. And it really makes your life a lot easier and it's easy to keep organized. So we're gonna get out our splitters and we're gonna put one at each step like this going into each machine. So that one's lined up perfectly there. We'll put another one down here. And then we'll put a third one down here. Just look at the lines to make sure they're lined up. And then we don't really need one here at the end, but we're going to anyways, because we could just make the belt go straight in, but why not just for the un uniformity of a look. In case we want to expand it later. And then we just need to hook up all of these with our belts as well. You can see our iron ingots are starting to flow in here. And so what happens is that this splitter will split it in half, right? Half goes into this machine, the other half goes to these three. And you're thinking that will starve those machines. That's not enough. You have 30 going in here, 30 going down there for three machines. That's not enough. But you can already see what happens in action. Once this belt fills up and this machine fills up, it will send the entire output out this direction. And then it splits half and half here. Then when that one fills up, it sends the entire belt to the next one and then it splits half and half. So what happens over time as these things fill up, you actually have the right amount in each machine as long as you have enough input coming in to satisfy the needs of your system. So in this case, these four constructors use 60 iron ingots. We have 60 iron ingots coming in. And then, so that will work over time. It will be balanced and each one will get 15. It's a pretty nice system and it really saves you a lot of time trying to split everything perfectly. Let's get our recipes on here and hooked up to the power. So here we're gonna make iron rods. So we'll select iron rods. I'll show you a little trick here as well. If you control C, just looking at it, it says setting copied. 
can look at the net you can uh, go to the next machine hit control v setting pasted setting pasted setting pasted and then that recipe is on all of them. get some uh, power poles in here as well so we'll get a power pole and just kind of put it right between the two of them same thing here just to make it look uniform and then we'll hook these up with our cable let's just go do a check on the bi biomass burners always need to check to make sure you have enough because it's very annoying to blow a fuse okay we still have 145 in there 116 in there and 118 in there that's good we have a little bit of time we have at least 10 minutes but we are burning those pretty quickly now that we've added these additional constructors and additional chains to the mix this chain already has seven machines each one at about four megawatts of pop so this adds up pretty quick that's fully utilizing this normal node to make iron rods so have 60 iron ore per minute and it's all being used to make 60 iron rods per minute but we also need screws as well for this milestone we need 500 screws we also need screws to make reinforced iron plates with so let's just take a look at a constructor just to look at the screw recipe again so we need 10 iron rods making 40 screws per minute we're making 60 iron rods at the moment we don't want to use all of our iron rods for screws because that won't leave us any iron rods sitting around to use for construction or to use for other milestones. So for now, we're going to use half of our iron rod production on screws and half of our iron rod production is to store to use for construction or for other things. So that means we need three constructors worth of screws, each using 10 per minute. So we use 30 iron rods per minute for that and we'll store 30 iron rods per minute for other needs. But first we need to collect the output of our iron rods and we'll do the same thing that we did on the other side in reverse so we want our output to come this direction so we can line it up with each machine and then hook this all up with your belt and what we're going to do here we're going to add another couple rows of foundations now they have our output collected for our iron rods i want to make our screw production here but i do know that we don't have enough reinforced iron plates for more constructors that requires screws themselves so you need something that uses screws to be able to make screws and until you have screw production going then you need to hand craft them so we're going to go back to the hub use some iron rods that i just pulled out of these machines so we need three constructors they each take two reinforced iron plates so I'm just going to go ahead and make enough screws until the reinforced iron plate number is 10. And then we'll make that just to have a little bit of slack. Okay, so here's we're back to our iron rod production. We have some reinforced iron plates, so we'll get out our constructors and then line them up here. We'll line them up right with actually I screwed up here. I need to realign this merger here to have the output go the other direction. We're going to take this, uh, replace this merger and uh, this happens all the time and you got to fix it up. You know what you're doing is I'm going to take this last merger and make it go out this direction so we can connect it into our future machine. Put these belts back up like so. And so we're going to have a row of splitters right here and we're going to make another manifold with these iron rods. So we're going to use half of these iron rods for screws and then store the other half. So let's get out our constructors to make them. We're going to line this up right here like this. We're going to do three of these. You can hit control and we'll line it up perfectly like that. And then down here in this last spot, instead of a fourth constructor, like we have on the other side, we're going to take a storage container. We're going to put that lined up and right in the middle like that. And we're going to create another manifold of the splitter here. Line that up between the two things. And as I'm putting down this first splitter, I notice we're low on cable. And again, you know, I haven't done this for a while. You got to make sure you're up on all your material. So we'll run back to the hub. As long as you keep things close, it doesn't take too long. Knock out a couple cable. We'll make more later. And we're back on our grind. Okay. So we'll put our splitters here to make another manifold like we just made. Line up our inputs there and our outputs with our machines. We'll put it right in the middle of the foundation like this. Turn that. 90 degrees so the inputs and outputs line up do the same thing down here into this storage container 
Now we can hook up our belts into each machine. So just like on the other side, this will take in our 60 iron rods per minute. Split them off. So this will be half and half at first. 30 going this way, 30 going that way. And then once this fills up, everything will go down that way. Everything left over will go into this storage container. And this will work out where we use half of our iron rods for screws because it uses 10 per minute. And the other 30 per minute will go into this container. And don't forget your power. Put our power poles here. So you can see we're collecting our iron rods here. We already got 50 of them because we got four constructors going at the same time. So now you can see our maximum consumption is actually higher than our maximum production. We can only make 70. And right now we can use up to 76. I know our iron plate production is yellow in its paws and that's the only reason we haven't blown a fuse. And so we need to be careful and cognizant of that while we're making all, putting in all these new machines. I'll we'll actually leave that pause and let this make uh, screws for a little bit. And then we'll go back and make sure we have enough power for everything. Our screw production is gonna come down here. We have our storage container for our iron rods. And now we're gonna put an additional storage container down here. We're gonna line it up exactly there in the middle of the foundation. Let's just gather our output for our screws here. We'll merge them all together with the output coming down here to go into that storage container. Then we'll hook up the belt here, skipping this one and going down to this that I thought I had it lined up where it would go straight in. I do at a 50 degree angle. Beautiful. So that will gather all of our screw production coming in here. And then this container here will gather half of our iron rod production. Another thing that we unlocked with our base building was a lookout tower. So I'm going to put a lookout tower down here just so we can take a look at our handiwork. Lookout tower, you can just run right up here. It helps you view your factory from above. So you can get a sense of everything. So here's our beginner iron rod and screw factory. We're using this entire normal node here, 60 iron ore per minute, making 60 iron ingots per minute, using these four constructors to make 60 iron rods per minute. And then using half of those to make screws, which gives us 120 screws per minute. Now we're running out of belt issues here. We'll, we'll get that in a little bit. And then we're taking the other half of iron rods and putting them in this container. And it's one issue to bring up is that your belt at the start, Mark 1 belts, can only hold 60 items per minute. So that's really one and a half constructors worth of screws. So we're going to go ahead and turn one of these off and we'll still be filling up that belt. You can see it backing up already. I'm going to turn one of them off just to save some power for now. But once we get Mark 2 belts, at a later milestone, we can come back on and turn the machine back on and get our full output. So you can turn off a machine by going here and hitting standby, and that will save you the power. So we just have about enough screws to get what we need for our milestone. There we go. Grab our 500. And all we have left is cable, and that's something that we'll automate right after we get a little bit more power. But for now, we're just gonna make our cable handcrafted here. We have plenty of wire. I'm just gonna hit spacebar and let it click away here for a little bit. Okay, so there is enough cable for our milestone for obstacle clearing. Let's put our cable in there and we're ready once again to hit that beautiful big red button. Go watch the thing for the third time. It's very exciting to get to hit the button this often. We've just unlocked two key things. That is the ability to make solid biofuel, which turns biomass into solid biofuel which burns for a very long time in the biomass burner. We'll also have the ability to make a chainsaw and that will allow us to chop down trees, uh, ingredients for biomass much more quickly. So let's take a look at what the chainsaw takes. It takes five reinforced plates, 25 iron rods, 15 cable and 160 screws. We're a little short on reinforced iron plates and we're a little short on screws. So let's go grab those screws from our production. I'm sure that we have made 180 since last time we looked. Yes, 260. So we'll grab those screws. We'll go back and handcraft a couple of reinforced iron plates and then make our chainsaw. Before we actually wield our chainsaw, we have to put solid biofuel into our chainsaw to get it to work. So we're gonna have to handcraft a little solid biofuel and that takes biomass. So let's go out and do a little gathering spree and grab some leaves and woods. Without a chainsaw, hopefully for the very last time. And you don't need to load anything up if you have the fuel in your inventory. You can see it down there in the bottom left. And now we can use our chainsaw and we are ready to go. 
So let's do our first sawing right here on this tree next to the hub. Boom. So these things right here largely give you mycelia, which we can use for biomass here when we unlock the ma'am in a little bit. But for now, we'll take down a couple of these smaller trees right here. And you realize that when you use your chainsaw, it doesn't just take out the tree right that you're aiming at. It will take out everything kind of around it. So you need to be careful if there are trees that you want to preserve uh, for looks or what have you. As you walk around, you will find these little deposits like this. Here's some iron ore that you can knock out if you need a little bit of extra. But we don't really care about iron deposits like that. What we do care about is if there are caterium or quartz or other elements that are sitting around like that that allow us to get a little bit of head start on those products. And it looks like we have run out of power and our fuse has broken, which doesn't surprise me because we've been running around for a little bit now without it. Yes, we have. Uh, one thing you can do if you don't know, if you hit H, it puts away the things in your hand. So then you are go back to hands free operation. And here we've used all of our biomass. But now we can actually put some solid biofuel in here and this will last for a very long time instead of 10 biomass burning per minute it now burns four solid biofuel per minute so this will buy us five minutes here at least if you right click on something it splits it in half I'll let you know a little trick there so we'll go back to here where we started a little bit we're going to make a biomass processing facility and then a, a large number of biomass burners that will allow our power to last for a really long time uh, without us having to run around all the time to fill it up. When we do fill it up, it'll take a while to get all the materials, but until then, it will burn for a good amount of time. So we need a couple of things here. We need two constructors, one which will take leaves and turn it into biomass, and the other one will take wood and turn it into biomass. So we have one constructor there. Let's get out another. We'll put that right next door. Hit control, line it up. We have the outputs coming out the same way like this and we'll put on the recipes here so we can put on this will be biomass for leaves and this will be biomass for wood yes we'll merge the biomass together from these two sources let's get our belt out into there and we'll get our belt to here go back to and you see one thing that i've done to stay organized is our constructors are one foundation wide i always line them up on get their own foundation and then when I've been using splitters and mergers, I've been just putting them on their own foundation of well in the middle. You can obviously make this a little bit more compact if you need to, but there's really not that much of a reason to do that. There's nothing really pushing you to keep it really tight. We have a ton of room out here to build and the map is huge. So we have a biomass here and there's another step in the biomass process that we just unlocked that solid biofuel and you can turn biomass to solid biofuel in a constructor as well. And that will help you Speed up your biomass collection you just need to go get the leaves and the wood drop them off from the machines and then solid biofuel comes out the other end so we'll put this right here where we can feed this directly into this machine and then we'll turn this machine into solid biofuel production and this takes 120 biomass per minute and pumps out 60 solid biofuel per minute this is very efficient recipe it really pumps out the solid biofuel. So let's get some storage down here at the end as well so we can have a place to store all of our solid biofuel and don't hide any biomass underneath your store, <laughs> underneath your foundations. Go grab it before you cover it up because we're still gonna need it for a little bit here. Let's get out a storage container to store our solid biofuel. So we're gonna put it right here in the middle of this foundation. We're gonna get the belt out of here and we can actually put this straight in there with a nice 90 degree bend just because we spaced it in the proper way. I'm gonna go with five here to begin with. Let's put another row here, the foundations, and we'll just zoop that across. And then here's a real hot tip that I actually didn't know I'd played this game for 800 hours literally before I found this out. I actually discovered it on accident when I was making a video uh, on a giant, you know, 60 electromagnetic control rod. Actually, it was 120 electromagnetic control rods per minute factory. And then I accidentally clicked my middle mouse button and then it gives you whatever you're pointing at to build. Looky there. Huh, I had no idea. And we're gonna turn these around like this so they're facing each other. That gives us 10 biomass burners that we can just run down the middle of right here. And so we now we need to put in some power poles. I know it did say our fuse broke. Uh, that's okay. I knew that was going to happen. But we're not gonna need to worry about that here in just a little bit. We're gonna get a power pole for each. Oh, we need a couple iron rods here. We need a power pole for each 
pair of biomass burners. So then we can hook the power poles together and still have enough connections to get the power into it. So see, we've let this run. Now we have all kinds of iron rods, about everything we'd ever need. Grab some screws just while we're over here, just for fun. So that is a pretty nice production line going for screws and iron rods, as you saw. Use our middle mouse button trick here, put down a power pole, and then start hooking these up to each machine. So two on each pole, hook that up to the next pole, two on each pole. And that will leave you some extra power connections on the end, but the power lines in the middle will all be full like this. I know this is kind of a mess with the power poles, but this is just how it goes. I mean, I could get out here and try to get these things lined up perfectly and put foundations everywhere, but that's a little bit overkill for the start of the game. I mean, it's always going to look slightly rough and ready. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Try to line it up a little bit and do a good job. But as I said, it's not it's not going to be completely perfect. So we're going to hook this up right there. So that hooks our 10 generators up. Now we have a bunch of stuff hooked up. And so we have now 10 full strength biomass burners. We have two of these little ones on the hub that we can probably just remove now that we have 10 big ones. And we've also automated our biomass production. But our fuse has broken. So we're gonna do a couple things here. This wire right here, this single wire turns off our whole iron rod and screw production right here. And so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off because that's a big power draw. And then we're gonna hook this back on. Now this should turn on fine because it doesn't have all those machines going on there. That's a little trick if you need to preserve power, if you put everything kind of on their own line, so to speak, you can turn the factory off by sections just by removing the power. And now we'll see the biomass is coming in here to make solid biofuel. And then as we make that, we're going to be able to stock up our biomass burners uh, one at a time. What we're gonna do now, we're waiting for that to put out a little bit of biofuel is go over to our milestone and choose our next one. We have a couple of things we can start Moving on to here, we have this, which makes assembler. So a two input machine, which is starting to get a little bit more complicated and actually unlocks the parts you need to build the space elevator. These uh, resource sinks and the awesome shop, which really gives you a lot more options in de terms of decorating your factory and different walls and such. And then you have this, which unlocks faster conveyor belts and the stackable conveyor pole, which is very useful. And the bigger conveyor belts are perfect for screw production because you just make so many you can't fit that many constructors worth of screw onto uh, your Mark One belt. So this is a good one to have as well. But one you might see like field research, do I need this? And really, I think this is the one to choose. And this is the one to choose for a couple reasons. You get an op object scanner, which will help you go unlock a couple hard drives, giving you alternate recipes. And I'll talk about why that's important here in a little bit. You also get more inventory slots, which will be at a premium soon here, especially as we go try to collect a lot of biomass and you get another hand slot. So if we, especially if you're not playing with passive creatures like I am, to have a weapon and your chainsaw and you can alternate back and forth with just a roll of your mouse wheel, that's pretty handy. And the last thing that's really important is the MAM. And it's something that a lot of players overlook. And it's a place where you basically take new materials and analyze them and it will unlock things and there's things in there that can be unlocked only in the MAM, like the Blade Runners, et cetera, and other equipment. And there are things that are unlocked quicker in the MAM if you go and do them than they would be otherwise. So it's important to get that down and start your research early. So that is the milestone that we're going to do. Honestly, we probably already have enough re uh, resources for this milestone right now. We can put our screws in, that's 300. We just need to go grab some more wire and some more plate. All right, we got 80 solid biofuel already. And so what we're going to do is go into our inventory. We're gonna right click on this a couple of times to split it in half. So we go into groups of 20 and I'm gonna keep 20 for my chainsaw, but then I'm gonna put 20 in three of these machines. And this will buy us a little bit of time to get some more biomass. And it's good to spread it out across the machines because it will burn a little bit more Slowly. You can see now we have the capacity for 130 megawatts and we'll soon have more than that as we fill this up. I really do like the look of these blue trees. I really do. I wish I could preserve them, but you know, the factory must grow. We got to do it. So let's get out our chainsaw. We have some biofuel in the inventory and let's cut down some trees. We're going to get a lot of wood and leaves doing this. We don't have to cut them all down. 
just a lot of them. <laughs> As you can say, it, it doesn't just do the trees. It gets all the biomass around the trees. It's a really, really efficient way to gather biomass. You don't have to run around and try to click all the little plants. Sometimes it doesn't get them all, but you know, that's okay. All right, now that we've gone on an absolute chainsawing rampage, let's go back and drop this off in our solid biofuel making setup get things loaded in so this is the leaf one so we'll put our leaves in here one thing you can do and actually we will do that is add storage containers down here at the end as well then you can just put it in the storage containers right there i had more than a stack's worth of leaves and that just makes it a little bit quicker for you to drop it off so we'll do that uh, we'll put that and we want the output coming this way oh there are ladders on top of these machines guys if you forget there's also ladders on the top of storage containers. So if you want to get a bird's eye view when you're looking around, you can just get on the top of a storage container. You can climb a ladder up to the top of here and jump around. This is a pretty good way to do it. If we're later in the game, I put a sign on it so I can remember which one. So this is the leaf side. Let's sort leaves. And this is the wood side. So we'll put the wood in here like that. So you can see you got the wood flowing in there. You got the leaves flowing in over there, turning into biomass down on this end. And then eventually turning into si solid biofuel over here on this end, you can see the loads coming in now. Now we have a hundred more. Now we have all 10 of these machines working right now and we can see our capacity for power has gone all the way up to 340 megawatts. We have 10 30 watt biomass burners and two 20 watt biomass burners built into the hub. So now we have some serious power. So what I'm gonna do now is go over and click our screw and iron rod production back on that we took off because we were blowing a fuse until we had that done. So let's hook this back up here. We just hook this up to any of these holes like that. And then the whole machine, the whole row of machines, the whole mess of machine comes on. You can see they're actually synchronized because they turned on at the same time. Milestone reached. Now that the drop ship has returned from our field research milestone, I want to talk a little bit about what I want to do next. I actually don't want to grab another milestone right now. We're going to save that for another video, but I want to prepare our factory for what's ahead. Building the space elevator, getting assemblers, two input machines, and what have you. We want to have every early part automated. And we also want to go looking for hard drives. Hard drives are very important in this game because you can scan them in the MAM to get alternate recipes, which aren't necessarily always better, but they are different and give you different options for either production rate, maybe use a different building to make the same thing or have different ingredients to make the same thing. So they're very important to gather early. The reason why it's important to gather them early is there's like a hundred recipes in the game. So each hard drive that you scan, you have three recipes to choose from that are determined randomly from the available recipes. And the available recipes are, are only recipes for things that you have unlocked. So it's important if you wanna grab some alternate recipes, early game items, you have a better chance of grabbing those recipes early in the game before you unlock anything else. So for instance, if we unlock the next milestone where we get assemblers, copper sheets, rotors, modular frames, all those alternate recipes would be thrown into the pot for random selection. So, it, so it's better to actually go and grab some hard drives right now if we want some of the key alternate recipes that exist. So two of the key ones that I would wanna get at this point is cast screws, which allows you to make screws straight from iron ingots so you don't have to make iron rods in the middle, and iron wire, which isn't particularly useful right now, but later in the game, it's one that you're probably gonna to wanna to have and you can make wire from iron, saving your copper for other things. There's a few other good recipes out there as well, but those are the two that I have my eye on at the moment. So we did unlock the MAM, so you can see there's a couple new things. We can talk about the unlocks here. We have a personal storage box, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a storage container. And then we've unlocked the MAM right here, which we need a little bit of cable and a little bit of reinforced iron plates to make. So let's make that before we go out for a little hard drive hunt. Put our MAM right here on the middle of this foundation like that. Actually, for the first time, use a ramp foundation here. Put our ramp on right there. So so we can walk up. Now we're gonna go on a little hunt for hard drives and something that you need to look around for. Uh, I'm a little bit in an unfair position because I've played this game for 800 hours before this and kind of know where a bunch of them are already off the top of my head. I've gone through and collected them all uh, more than once, but 
If you see th something in the distance like this, like right here, this is a crash site from a drop ship. And every time you see that, they have a lost hard drive inside the main body of them. And a couple of things you can do here is also pick up some spare parts for things that you don't have, like modular frames. Let's see what else we have laying around. Remember, there's something good. Yeah, there's some wire. Got some cable over here. So this is a good source to pick up some items that you may not have or may not even have the ability to make yet like this. So let's open up the drop pod and it says I need 21 rotors. Rotors is not something that we have unlocked. So we can't open this drop pod to get the hard drive out of it quite yet. We do want to come back when we have rotors unlocked. It's actually that one of the next milestones so we can come back and get this one in a little bit. But there is a few other ones close by. But again, if you're playing this for the first time, you just kind of have to hunt around a little bit and look. And it's pretty dangerous when you go to do this. And there's one right here. And this is actually the closest one to the starting position where they put you down, which is right up on that ledge up there. And now we grabbed now we grabbed all this stuff around. So now it's time to try to open this up. And if you look around, just keep your eyes peeled. You can actually see more. There's actually a crash site right up there. We need 30 megawatts of power to unlock this drop pod. So that might be daunting to you. Oh my God, we have to pull a power cable all the way from our base. We don't have to do that. We'll just set up a quick temporary thing because you only need power for just a second. So let's get a biomass burner out here. Hook up your power cable to the drop pod. Drop your leads in here. That's making some power and just run over here real quick and then open it up a chunk. There you go, your first hard drive. Look at our little base, it's looking pretty good, right? We're getting some stuff done. Let's go to our ma'am. And now up here, you have the option to click hard drive. And since we have one of those, we have it on here and just hit the scan hard drive button and it takes 10 minutes. And one thing you can do, I don't recommend this, but if you wanna cheese a little bit, you can save it before you put the hard drive in the ma'am. And then if you don't like the outcome for the three random draws to choose from, you can go reload that save and then it will redraw the three choices. I don't really like doing that. That just seems like a little, little much to me. Just go find more hard drives if you want different recipes, but you know, to each their own. I want to let you know that that is an option. While we're waiting for that to scan, there's still one basic product that we haven't automated yet, and that is cable. So we're going to go over to our copper production and re factor that a little bit so we make both wire and cable over here. Let's just take a look at our smelting setup first. So this makes 60 copper ore per minute. It's a normal node with a Mark 1 miner. And then each smelter smelts 30 copper ore per minute. So we could actually be doing two smelters worth of copper ore with the amount that's coming out of the miner. So let's get something else going that's just a little bit more efficient. If you recall, we can use foundations on top of these nodes, which I like to do gives it a nice clean look. So put a foundation on there and hit control, line it up to the world grid. And we can put a couple foundations around the outside here. Okay. So let's get our miner back on here. And we'll line it up going this way. Let's get a couple of foundations. We're actually going to run this belt all along foundation. And you can see how this starts to go in the sand right here. Let's get out a ramp just to make this go a little bit higher and above the sand. Start with three by three and then increase it as we go. So we're going to bring our copper right up here. Let's grab it first. Bring the belt up this little ramp like this. Like I said, we can get two smelters worth of production out of this miner. So let's get out two smelters. Line this up right here in the middle of the foundation like this. And we'll give each smelter its own foundation just to keep them aligned. And then we'll split this out into each one. And get our input is coming from that direction. Then hook them into the machines like that. And then we'll get a power pole out. Put it right down here. And just hook it up to each one. Then we'll have the copper ore will be coming in. There it comes put on our copper ingot recipes. And we're gonna use these copper ingots in a very similar manner to what we did with our iron rods down in our factory over there in that we're gonna turn these into copper ingots, turn them all into wire, and then we're gonna store part of the wire and then use the other part of them to make cable. So let's go down here and take a little bit of a look at the recipe for cable because we haven't looked at that on the machine yet. 
Oh, okay. While we're doing that, our ma'am research is complete. So let's go see what we have to choose from in terms of our alternate recipes. Very exciting. Our first alternate recipe. What should we choose? Okay, the moment of truth. Okay, here we go. Here's what we have to choose from. Bolted iron plates, iron wire, and stitched iron plates. Hmm. So these are all pretty good recipes. So bolted iron plates use the same ingredient as reinforced iron plates, except they use fewer machines. It pumps out more per machine. If you're looking to save room, that's a good recipe. It is a little bit more uh, resource efficient and building efficient. You have iron wire, which allows you to use iron instead of copper to make wire. And this is a really, really good recipe. I actually use this all the time in my big phase four. I finished the space elevator saves. This is something that gives you a little bit more flexibility because there's so much iron on the map. This actually uses more machines than the copper recipe, I believe. And I think it's 50 50 on power. So unless you're hard up on copper, this one is maybe not the best for this point in the game. Although I really do like this one. So if you think if you want to do that, where you just want to be as convenient as possible, that's something to consider. You can do all the math in the world to see which is most resource efficient, but sometimes just about what's convenient for you. And if you want to make everything all in one big iron factory, this lets you do it. And then the last option I think is the one that I would choose. And this is stitched iron plates. And this is a recipe that I love. I always use this recipe for reinforced iron plates for one reason, no screws. This lets you get around having to wait for higher capacity belts for all the screws you need to pump through for reinforced iron plate production. And then there are enough recipes in the game where if you get enough recipes and you progress, you can actually not have to use screws at all. In my game, that is how it is. I actually never make screws. So I think this is an excellent recipe and one that I think you might look back on if you don't get it now, wishing I would have chosen that. So I'm gonna choose stitched iron plates for that exact. You can always find more hard drives if you want another set. You're just gonna have to look and run around. It's part of the game. Or you can look, there are resources on the internet like satisfactorycalculator.com, which do have an interactive map, which will let you check out where all the hard drives are. Let's get back to finishing our copper factory over here. Let's gather our output here for our copper ingots. I'm gonna put them lined up here in the middle. Like this. And then we'll hook up the belts. So let's make a little bit bigger of a platform. We're gonna make four constructors. So we're gonna make this. Now we're gonna put down our constructors here. We're gonna have the input on that side because that's where the ingots are coming from and the output going this direction. Put down four of those. Let's get up on our ladder on this constructor and I think we can probably put them all down from here. So let's get out our splitters. Make sure the input's coming in the right direction. There we go. Get the two green lines and you should be good to go. And then we'll collect the output over here with mergers. And we'll have our mergers coming down in this direction because we're gonna use, we're gonna store some of this output. And then we're gonna use some of this output to make cable. The cable uses 60 wire per minute, and this entire chain is gonna make 120 wire per minute. So what we're gonna use is half of this to make wire to store, and the other half to make cable to store. And we don't need to worry about this belt right here, because these two are gonna make 60 wire, and these two are gonna make 60 wire. And that way we don't have to worry about meeting our belt limit. There's only gonna be 60 on this part, and then 60 on that part. So we won't have to worry about Mark II belts at this point quite yet for our production. So let's put out a few more platforms right here. You know, a lot of people like to lay out their platforms ahead of time, but early in the game like this, I don't mind being a little bit flexible and just kind of see how it works. Part of building where there's a lot of room like this and why this and the grassy fields are the preferred location for beginners. Okay, so we'll get out a constructor for our table right here and we'll put it in line but we actually need to adjust the output of this merger. I adjust the output of this merger to come this direction towards the cable machine. Like so. We're gonna fill in our belts. And we're gonna put a constructor right over here. 
we'll end up with this input this right on the edge like that this will take the output of these two constructors making wire and then turn them into cable so this will use half of our wire to make cable and then we'll store the other half of our wire and then we'll make wire over here as well but we'll just take this to storage so we have wire to work with and construction so we'll put two storage containers down here one right here with the input on this side for cable and then one right here with the input on the other side for wire so this storage will be for cable this storage will be for wire and now we've brought it nice and close up to our hub so we don't have to run quite as far convenient excellent now we need to hook up a little bit of power so we're going to get power poles down here in the middle and then our ingots will start coming in and we'll start getting wire cable let's just take a look at what we look like power wise here and see where we stand so we're still have the capacity to run 340 megawatts and right now our maximum consumption has gone up because we've hooked up more machines to our grid up to almost 100 megawatts but we still have plenty of headroom here as we grow our factory see we missed one power so we'll hook that up right there as well and some cable should start emerging there it is gaze upon this beautiful sight what a start to our satisfactory journey we have our hub we have our iron plates automated we have our iron rods and screws automated we have wire and cable automated and we have our concrete automated down there we have a massive power grid with 10 biomass burners we have solid biofuel automated we have a chainsaw we even got our first alternate recipe and we all did this in a pretty short amount of time with a minimum of fuss not perfect there's wires crossing each other every once in a while but we got nice 90 degree bends in our belts and everything is looking pretty organized it gave us a great start for the rest of phase one so we can get started on our space elevator and unlock the rest of this beautiful world if you like this video i have a ton more content for you to check out i have more tutorials i have process of building my mega factories i even have a whole series of specials on how to fit entire factories into one blueprint. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss what's coming next. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Until next time, I'm Dr. Luke Crate and stay stoked out there.